I'm Terry Kolath. I'm here today with Professor Adrian Kerr, and we have come to session four of the History of England. Thanks for joining me, Adrian. It's a pleasure to be here at Shell Point, Terry. Session four. All right, it was, it was um, about time to move into Elizabeth I. Yep, Henry VIII had died, and Mary took over for a short period. The Bloody Mary, as she's called in history, because she was a Catholic and took out her frustrations on Protestant leaders, but she died after a short period of time. And then amazingly, Elizabeth, um, Henriette's other daughter, um, had survived the Catholic zone and she became uh, the Queen of England. And she set about creating um, the rise of England as a world power. Yeah. Um, her father, Henry VIII, had created the world's strongest navy at that time and bankrupted the country in doing so. And she took advantage of that. So you see now England spreading its wings across the oceans. Um, Elizabeth I gave her name to Elizabethan age because there are all sorts of uh, expansion, influence, and of course, then we also have um, Shakespeare. Um, and so the Elizabethan age is a, is a special time in English history. Um, and uh, the, when she died, um, there was an issue of, uh, she had no children, she had no husband, which was a bone of contention because the Catholic um, leaders in, in Europe, particularly Philip II, the strongest monarch in the whole of Europe, um, wanted to take over Protestant England and bring it back into the Catholic faith. Um, and uh, the Pope said, anybody who kills Elizabeth will go straight to heaven. Oh, goodness. And uh, he gave Remind the blessing. Remind you of what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> he gave the blessing to Philip II to conquer England and make it a Catholic country again. And that led to the Armada, the famous Armada, where um, her navy managed to defeat the Spanish Armada and kept it independent and Protestant. She died without a husband because she was concerned that they would influence her and also could be of a Catholic nature. So she died childless which led to a Mary Queen of Scots, who a cousin, her, Mary's son, um, was um, the King of Scotland, and he became the King of England, King of Scotland, James I of England. So he was a good Protestant, and he came down from Scotland. It was all pre-cooked. This was pre-cooked during the last few years of her life. There wasn't a civil war, a revolution, it was all organized. So Mary Queen of Scots, although herself was decapitated by um, Elizabeth, um, she, before conspiring with the French, um, her, her uh, son, James, became joint king. And so we start, in, start to see interesting things. We start to see uh, peace between England and Spain, which is really important because now England could start colonies in the New World. Wow. And so we start to see Jamestown and the Plymouth Colony and the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And this is the beginning of uh, the colonization of the east side of America. Unfortunately, the Stuarts are also well known for being um, changing their religion to suit themselves. And so we have four Stuart kings and the, um, one, the second one um, didn't like the idea of being told what to do by the embryonic parliament. And so the civil war in England broke out in 1615 and this is a war between royalty and the parliamentarianism. And the parliamentarianism won uh, after a bloody civil war um, where families were split in two, just like the American Civil War, there was split loyalty. But eventually Parliament won and the famous leader of the military branch was Oliver Cromwell. And he brought England back into a Puritan period, which is why people wear black and white clothes, which is why the people who ended up in the Plymouth colony and the people in Massachusetts Bay Colony um, wore black and white clothes, very modest, not flamboyant. That was the royalty. The, the king of England was a flamboyant with ruffs and silks and such. And this was a rebellion against royalty by having um, the parliament run the country. Um, well, this only went so far because then uh, two more Stuarts came in because they fed up with having this very austere parliamentarian. When Ro Oliver Cromwell died, his son was supposed to take over, but he had no position to be the king or leader of England, so he was pushed out and uh, the Stuarts were brought back in again. And the next, uh, the, the last of the Stuarts um, actually turned out to be Catholic. And so he was encouraged to leave um, and uh, they brought in a new Protestant king who was Prince William of Orange, um, who was married to the Protestant daughter of Charles II. And so it was that William and Mary set up camp in England, hence William and Mary College in America. And this is a period of um, uh, growth in uh, bringing England into a more modern um, world. 
We then spend a little bit of time on what was going on in the colonies because the colonies had got so extensive they were beginning to um, impinge on the French traders um, west in the western area. And so we'll talk about the French and Indian War. And then, of course, that led, as we know from the previous series of the uh, um, United States wanted to be independent from England, um, and so the um, War of Independence took place. And then we'll finish off by talking about what England did next. Um, and one of the amusing things was that England used to ship all its um, criminals to the colonies to put them into work as serfs. And not surprisingly, the new government in the United States said, we don't actually want any of your criminals coming in. So England then had to find a place to ship off the criminals, and they decided to ship them to a new colony in Australia called Botany Bay, and that eventually led to the founding of Sydney. So we'll finish off by talking about what England did after the colonies were lost. Amazing. Well, that's session four, and um, we hope you'll be there with us.